This is another video from StrayBlogger.com. My name is Nate Rivers, and this video is about how to start a blog that makes money. So this will be a pretty basic overview of how to start a blog, but this is going to go on a page on my site that a lot of people new to an online business or new to blogging are going to come across. So first of all, I just want to go over some of the basic principles as to why an online business is so awesome. Now, whether you have a full-time job or even if you run your own uh, regular business I guess you could say you've probably figured out that if you stop working you stop making money so the number one principle or the number one benefit of an online business is that your online business and your content as long as you have your Whatever, whatever it is that makes you money, whether it's AdSense or affiliate sales or if you're selling your own products, as long as you have that sales process automated, then your business and all your content is constantly working for you around the clock 24-7. And because of that, you have instant leverage. So every blog post, every article, every video, PDF, comment, anything that you publish that can drive more traffic and sales it just gives you more and more leverage and uh, what you'll experience to a cert or at a certain point is just kind of a snowball effect where everything that you're doing adds up and you start to see huge results and it, it never really slows down as long as you're doing things right it, it can only get bigger so there's one there's one thing that hangs that some people get hung up on now most people understand everything I've just said about why an online business is superior to regular types of businesses or especially superior to you just working a set number of hours each day at a regular job. But most people's problem comes because they give up at the first roadblock they come to, whether that's technical details, uh, no traffic, or not as much traffic as they thought they were going to have, or no sales in the first few months. I won't get into this here, but uh, if you've read around other places on my blog, you've, you know, I've talked about how it, it basically took me three entire years of working on this stuff, quite a bit, to, before I ever even figured out how to make any money at all. So, you just, you can't, it just comes down to how bad you want something. I mean, it's like anything else. So, back to this topic of blogging. Why start with a blog? The benefits to blogging is, first of all, it's pretty much the easiest way to start an online business. Anybody can start a blog, start publishing content. You don't have to have any physical products to sell or even a service that you offer. And just through content and getting web traffic, you know, you can offer affiliate products or even just have ads on your site where if someone clicks a link, such as AdSense, you get paid an amount. So it's the easiest way to start an online business it's also a great way to spread the word about your current business whatever that might be it's a great way to reach your target market it's a great way to interact with your readers and your customers and the main thing that I like to use it for and really the way that a you know a monetized blog has become for an online business it's it's kind of your conversion hub for all other traffic sources and what that can mean is you know, not necessarily, maybe your sales process doesn't take place on your blog, but more and more your blog or a company's blog is becoming the place where your readers or your customers come to just kind of interact with you, whether you're, you know, a personality behind your blog, uh, kind of like Stray Blogger is, or if it's just a business, you know, the blog for an actual brick and mortar business. It's just where you customers can get updates, find more information about you, kind of more personalized information. So it's just kind of your conversion hub for everything else that your business entails. And so the the next question is what to blog about. And there's usually two types of people or two circumstances when it comes to somebody wanting to start a blog. Either you already have something to say and you want a platform to say it, or you just want to start basically you want to start an online business and with blogging and you need something to say so what that basically means is you're either blogging to expand your current business or you're starting a business by blogging 
those two things and it really doesn't matter where you're starting so the first decision you have to make is are you going to use a free blog or a self-hosted blog and there's kind of there's pros and cons with each one the free blog or the pros and cons for a free blog first of all it's free that's the biggest benefit that most people immediately think of it's easy and it's fast to set up I mean you just create an account enter your email address you can have a blogger blog up and running in less than five minutes but in my opinion uh, the cons list is a lot longer than the pro list you don't own anything your site or your blog can easily get erased or just shut down you're not you're just not in control of anything you don't have very much control over how you monetize it or you know what features you can have you're just you're limited to that platforms well its limitations so it's less it's also less professional instead of your site being you know your site dot com it's your site dot blogspot dot com or something like that so those are some of the pros and cons some of the pros and cons for a, a hosted blog that you pay a hosting account for uh, you have full control over features and monetization you can make your site with you know with a WordPress site that you've installed on your own hosting account you can add I mean there are thousands of different plugins options functionality all kinds of things that you can add features and, mon and ways to monetize your site and your blog You'll also have a professional domain name, whatever you set your domain name as, it'll be, you know, yourdomain.com, again, instead of yourdomain.blogspot.com. It's just a lot more professional, and people will take you more serious. Another thing is you never have to move your site, files, and content. So, so let's say that you did start with a free blog, and against the odds you, you know, had a lot of articles or, or whatever you were doing with your blog, you started, you got your your blogger blog to make money and you you know you say okay well I'm making enough money that I can get a hosting account well you have to try to figure out how to move all your site and your files and your content and the bad thing about having started with a free blog is it you can't go into the back end I mean you can't get into your blog through FTP or anything and take all your your root files the, the, really the only option you have is to copy and paste your content off your pages and then you'll be starting on a brand new web property and so those traffic sources your, your traffic's just going to be really reduced so it's just it's not worth it to start with a free blog basically that's what I'm trying to tell you uh, the next thing is another benefit you're building your own online real estate that you own hundred percent and then that just kind of blends in with the other benefits the cons obviously are that it costs money up front uh, luckily though now it's not even that much money you can start get a hosting account for like seven or eight dollars a month uh, another con is it'll take more time to set up initially you know you might be frustrated trying to figure out WordPress by yourself it's really not that hard I mean it's I've had more problems with Microsoft Word when I was learning that than I ever did with WordPress so the next thing is how to choose a web host. Uh, luckily, this isn't too hard. You want to look for flexibility, number one. There are different types of hosting out there. Shared hosting means that the servers that your site is going to be hosted on, they're partitioned into different pieces, basically, and the server storage is, is sold to different people. So there might be 20 or 100 different accounts on your same server and that can lead to all kinds of problems it's a lot more vulnerable to being to being hacked that way but the biggest disadvantage to shared hosting is that a lot of the web hosting companies out there are only shared hosting and so they offer really cheap prices but when you start when your sites actually start to get traffic they'll kick you off of their service because the bandwidth is really limited even though all of them advertise unlimited bandwidth so you want to go with a large hosting provider that offers the different types of hosting from shared to a VPS to a private VPS and upgraded VPS all the way up to an actual dedicated server so that when you need to move up you can seamlessly upgrade when you need to. The next thing you want to look for is a proven track record. You want to go with a company that's been around a long time that's not going anywhere because the worst thing that can happen 
if you pay for web hosting uh, services that you know overnight your site and your files disappear the next thing is support you are going to run into problems there will be things that you need to contact support over and you just need to find a hosting company that has again a proven track record as far as support goes so I can give you a major hint one of the best companies out there probably the best hosting company for anyone that's anywhere from being getting just started to someone advanced in building websites and everything I think the HostGator is the overall best option they fit all these criteria that I went over the next thing is you need to choose a theme and a theme as far as WordPress goes it's what defines the look and feel of your blog there are paid themes and there are free themes and you know the pros and cons of each one are kind of obvious free themes are free so that's a benefit but it's again it's kinda of like a free blog over time it's gonna take you more time to learn how to customize it if you really want to customize a free theme you're basically gonna to have to learn a little bit of HTML and CSS and when I was starting I had this idea that I wasn't gonna pay for a theme or pay for anything so I had a free theme and then a few months in I realized I was spending so much time looking up HTML and CSS tutorials to try to figure out how to make my blog do things that I wanted I thought this is ridiculous I could pay you know 97 bucks or two hundred dollars one time and never have to deal with this again because a solid paid theme will have all the functionality you know that you're looking for and whether it's drag and drop options or just a simple everything's inside your WYSIWYG ed editor uh, it, there's just a lot more benefits to just paying for the functionality that you need without having you taking hours of your own time to try to learn a bunch of different coding skills so you can go whatever way you want with that but uh, I would lean towards a paid theme you know if you can afford it it'll just save you more time in the long run the nice thing about the theme is you know it doesn't affect your files or the content of your site so if you're bootstrapping everything you can start with a free theme at the at the very least I would start with a, uh, an actual hosting account but you might start off with a free theme if you can't get the paid theme that you want right away and then s switching themes is pretty much seamless it, it won't erase any of your content or anything like that so that's the basics of how to get started with a blog for more videos like this or more tutorials and blog posts and articles you can visit my site at strayblogger.com